Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of like an extension to our last video. This is so important that we have to be aware of this. Share this video with naysayers that say, oh no, the government will never do that. Because I'm going to show you proof that our government, i.e. Federal Reserve, you all know that I think they're one and the same. They've been working on this for years. I sound like I'm beating a dead horse, but I want to show proof to those of you that maybe don't believe. I'm going to leave every single one of these links that we cover today on a pinned comment so you can go and research it for yourself because there's a lot more to see than what I'm going to show you here today. Right? I've stated in the past that MIT, the Massachusetts Institute for Technology, I believe it is, MIT, they've been working on a CBDC in conjunction with the Federal Reserve, with the Federal Reserve for like the last, since 2016, right? So so there's just going to be a lot of reading here, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the parts that, that are really important that I think that we should really be looking at. And please come and do your research. Come and look through this. There's so much stuff to look over through this. There is absolutely no way that this is not coming our way. Absolutely not. There's no way that they will not implement this. There's too much time and money that have been put into this, and they've been working on this for well over, almost a decade now, for well over a half a decade, but for almost a decade now. CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, and here is it's called the Digital Currency Initiative, D -I DCI. So if you hear me say DCI from reading something, it's that's what it means, Digital Currency Initiative. The DCI is engaged in collaborative research projects investigating the technical feasibility of CBDCs. And for those of you that don't know what a CBDC is, well, I already said it, central bank digital currency, with several central banking authorities around the world. Current collaborators include the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, the, CD, the DCI's collaborator in Project Hamilton. We're going to go over Project Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you knew or know that there is a Project Hamilton, the Bank of Canada, and the Bank of England. In addition, the DCI is engaged in collaborative technosocial research with Maiden Labs. This multidisciplinary work funded by the Gates Foundation, <clears throat> let me say that again, this multidisciplinary work funded by the Gates Foundation seeks to center global users in the design of digital currencies and to identify the technical and policy designs most likely to increase financial inclusion and mitigate harm to the poor. I have discussed some of this in the past, that in my opinion, the goal of the clowns that sit above the world, not even above the ivory towers or Capitol Hill, but above the world, that what they want in the end is a world with two classes, with them and then a class that has equal equity. Have you heard the term, you will own nothing, right? Have you heard that term before, that by 2030 you will own nothing? And what I mean by equal equity is that everyone in the world, except for the very few, the 0.01%, that everyone in the world will have equal equity, meaning that they will own nothing. No one will. That they will all be serfs. And that's what this is saying right here, in my opinion. But I want you to take a look at this. Papers, MIT DCI releases Project Hamilton open CBDC papers and open source code base. So Project Hamilton is a project that they are taking through several phases to eventually be able to roll out a CBDC onto the public of whatever country or central bank it is that they are working with. And check this out. This is just a few of their more recent articles. MIT Digital Currency Initiative announces research collaboration with the Bank of England announces research collaboration with the Bank of Canada. MIT experts test technical research for a hypothetical central bank digital currency. So take a look at the dates, February 3rd, March 17th of this year, of course, December of 2021, why central bank digital currency is a Federal Reserve Bank of New York's Liberty Street Economics. So when this finally rolls out, all right, and just take a look at all of these other articles about it, that way you know that it's true, that they really are working on it. When this finally rolls out in the next year or two or after the next major financial crisis or crisis of whatever kind they come up with, don't come back and say, oh, this was never planned, AP. This was never planned. All right? So to you out there that are still asleep, 
that are still walking behind a smoke screen, living your normalcy by his lies. This is planned, and it's been planned for several years. MIT Media Lab, Project Hamilton, building a hypothetical central bank digital currency. I'm only going to read to you the very first two paragraphs. The last decade has seen an explosion of digital currencies, and in recent years, leading economists, central bankers, and policymakers have joined technologists and entrepreneurs in exploring this new frontier. The potential benefit and design choice of central bank digital currencies are being debated in conferences. Have you been to those conferences? But while much is being discussed, there is little code to show for it. We at the Digital Currency In Initiative are excited to begin a collaboration with the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. No, they did not just start doing this. To develop a hypothetical CBDC as a team dedicated to open source software development and cryptocurrency research. DCI has been investigating the steps necessarily, necessary to securely and responsibly issue a CBDC since... 2016 i'll leave the link to all of this stuff ladies and gentlemen okay and then uh you can read for yourself the rest of this here but what i'm going to go to next is i'm going to click on here view the results of this collaboration and how you can get involved in phase two which means that they've already completed phase one project hamilton phase one and this is dated february 3rd of this year the year of the Lord, 2022. Federal Reserve Bank of Boston and MIT Digital Currency Initiative. I'm going to go ahead and start from here where it says, The Federal Reserve Bank of Boston and the MIT DCI are collaborating on exploratory research known as Project Hamilton, a multi-year research project to explore the CBDC design space and gain a hands-on understanding of a CBDC's technical challenges and opportunities. This paper presents the project's phase one research. Our primary goal was to design a core transaction processor that meets the robust speed throughout and a fault tolerance requirements of a large retail payment system, like credit cards, but better. Our secondary goal, now listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, our secondary goal was to create a flexible platform for collaboration, data gathering, comparison with multiple architectures and other features. With this intent, we are releasing all software form of our research publicly under the MIT open source license. Now this is the scary part that I've been talking about for a while now. Just listen. By focusing on phase one on the feasibility and performance of basic but resilient transactions, we aim to create a foundation for more complex functionality in phase two. So in phase one, they just want this thing to work. They want it to work like a credit card would work, that you can have a whole bunch of transactions in one second, that the system won't crash, that it can't get hacked easily, all those basic things that pretty much a credit card company does already. But here is phase two. The processor's baseline requirements include time to finality of less than five seconds. So pretty much they want you to be able to do a transaction in less than five seconds through, through output of greater than 100,000 transactions per second and wild scale geographic fault tolerance. Topics left to phase two include critical questions around high security issuance, system-wide auditability, meaning that they can audit the entire system easily, and listen, programmability, programmability of that CBDC. What does that mean? It's what I've been talking about for a while, that they will be able to program your money so that you can spend it where and when they decide that you can spend it. And then they go on to say how to balance privacy with compliance, technical roles for intermediaries and resilience to denial of service attacks. That is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen, in one word, programmability. Let me see if there's anything else here that I... No, you, you can all come back. I don't mean to make this, uh, this video very long, but I want to inform you so that please come and use these links. Do your research to see what it is that's coming down the road. This is one of the things that we have to prepare for the most. Well, while all of this thing is happening in the background, we have that thing happening with the big U and the big R. 
right? We have the fuel crisis that's going on in Europe and even here in the United States as well. We have inflation that's taking over the wealth of every family in the United States and pretty much around the world, pretty much making their money a lot less worth, worth a lot less, excuse me, than what it used to be, making them work more to get the same amount of stuff. We have all of these things going on. We have the mega drought, right? We have cyber attacks that can happen. We have solar flares from the sun. You can talk about any of that stuff, right? But is this in the mainstream? Is this being reported in the mainstream as robustly as all of these other things are being reported? Everything you see now, and I even hear about the, the ads that come on. Why are you placing ads for, for this side or that side on your videos? Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that may not understand, it is not the, it is not the YouTube creator, I guess you can say creator or influencer, whatever you call it, right? It's not the person behind that YouTube channel that places the ads. The ads are placed the type of ads that are placed on any video that you may watch on YouTube are placed there uh, through an algorithm, right? A lot of times uh, Google searches what it is that you like. So let's say, for example, that you like pancakes. Maybe you'll see some ads about pancakes. Let's say that you, you're, you've been searching on your computer for solar generators. So you may see more ads about solar generators, you know, come up on a video. Uh, so they choose what ads to put on there. Don't tell me that this is not coming. This is what we have to prepare for. How do you prepare against a CBDC? If that's the only form of money that we'll have left, well, it will allow you to resist, ladies and gentlemen. If you have everything that you need right now and you keep your gaps filled in and you stock as much of the things that you need to live your life, to preserve your standard of living, it is a lot easier for you to resist when that big crisis comes that will eventually have our government saying, hey, look, CBDCs are great. Having said that, I hope that you take this to heart and I hope that you do your own research. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you tomorrow during our live stream. God bless every one of you and God bless the United States of America.